Hey everyone, I don't know where to begin to describe G.I. Joe Operation Blackout, but I do want to start out by saying I think it's awesome that I still exist in a world where I get to enjoy all of these famous franchises from the 80s on my current gen console, such as Ghostbusters, Transformers, <sighs> G.I. Joe, which I'll get to in a few minutes, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I'm going to start off by giving my opinion about each title before I get to G.I. Joe. Starting with Ghostbusters the video game, which I still have my original copy on PS3, which also has the multiplayer portion, which I think is not currently operational for the multiplayer part, but you can still play the single player part. And recently, they re-released it as a remaster for PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch, which I did buy for the Switch. So I actually own three copies of this game, and I thought they did such a great job with Ghostbusters at the video game that it can easily pass as an official sequel to the movies. You can look at this as Ghostbusters 3 if you really wanted to uh, look at it like that. And I thought it was perfect for a Ghostbusters video game. Probably the best one we'll ever get and we'll ever have in this uh, current generation. So moving on to Transformers Devastation. We've gotten so many, so many Transformer games over the years, there were the ones based off the movies, which I do have in my video game collection, which were mediocre. There were the War of Cy or War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, which were great. You know, I really felt like they were proper Transformer games, but I still hope for a G1 Transformer game, and we finally got it with Transformers Devastation. And this is a awesome action game. And you know why? Because Platinum Games had a hand in making this. And it really shows because the action feels so satisfying whenever you play this game in Transformers Devastation. And it's G1 Transformers, so what more can you ask for? And I love it. I loved every minute of it. Probably my favorite Transformer game ever made next to the War for Cybertron and Fall for Cybertron games that came out for last, uh, last gen consoles. I'm going to get to G.I. Joe in a, in a minute. <laughs> uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan also by Activision, but you know what's strange is Platinum Games also had a hand in this, but it feels, it doesn't feel quite as good as Transformers Devastation. Like, Transformers Devastation feels way more enjoyable than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan, but I will say it was kind of satisfying getting to play as your favorite Ninja Turtle. You get to select between all four Ninja Turtles, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, uh, Leonardo, and you get to fight some of the famous bosses like Shredder, Bebop, Rocksteady, uh, forgetting the giant shark's name, I think it's Armagon, um, Karai, and Slash, which is the giant mutated um, mutant turtle that looks wicked. <laughs> and he, He's a snapping turtle. He's a giant, giant mutated slap, snapping turtle. Anyways, <laughs> uh, and also, there's C oh, uh, Krang. You get to fight Krang in an epic boss battle, and... Uh, I believe Super Shredder is a secret boss battle. I think you have to do some certain requirements before you get to the final boss of the game, and he'll either show up as the final boss or he won't. Now we have G.I. Joe Operation Blackout, which, you know, you, you would think by the artwork on the box and, and this existing on current-gen consoles such as PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and I think it's available on PC as well, you would think, you know, they would do a decent job with it. Yeah, yeah, I would say the game is just okay. Highly frustrating, and that's mainly due to the targeting system, but I'll talk about the targeting system later. And by the way, this is developed by Game Mills Entertainment. I don't know what else they did, but um, I will take the L, as they say, for buying this game for full price because I actually spent full price on this twice. I bought it for the Nintendo Switch. And, yeah, you know, other than the nostalgia with playing with your favorite characters, the game is very repetitive. <laughs> Just very repetitive. The graphics are... Mm, this feels like playing a PlayStation 2 game, I'll put it that way. When it comes to different variation between the levels, eh, other than playing with different characters... Well, there are some vehicle missions. I think there's like three vehicle missions total. All of them feel identical to each other. 
it, it doesn't really, uh, there's, there's, there's no difference except for maybe the type of bosses you fight at the end. Like the boss at the end of the first vehicle mission, I think you go up against a helicopter. I think there's no boss in the second vehicle mission, but the final vehicle mission you go up against like a jet or something, like a Cobra jet. But anyways, are the characters fun to play as? Eh, you know, I don't know. I think it comes down to the targeting mechanics in this game because I felt like I was fighting with the controls more than I was fighting the enemies in the game. And that's due to the aiming and targeting system. It just feels very wonky. And the way that the enemies move around very sporadically, it, it makes them hard to target. Even, when, even with the auto aim on, because when I went to the menus and see if I could adjust my aiming, I noticed auto aiming was on. So I turned it off and I had... So I had a little bit better time with aiming at enemies, but then I noticed multiple times where I would have the same issue where I could not aim at what I was trying to shoot at, and it felt really awkward, and that just made this game extremely frustrating to play. Now, yes, they could add a patch to fix that later on, so who knows what might happen in the future, but as of now, there's no patch for the aiming and targeting system and it just feels extremely awkward to the point where I got an extreme headache playing this game. Um, now, if the aiming was better in this game, sure, I might have a, a, a better time. I, I uh, you know, might give this game, I don't know, a, a decent rating. What would I rate it now? I don't even know, maybe, maybe a four out of 10. <laughs> I mean, it's a functional game, but the graphics, it looks like something from PlayStation 2. Gameplay mechanics are kind of rough. They're really rough, especially when it comes to the aiming, and you'll know what I mean if you decide to play this game. By the way, if you are a hardcore G.I. Joe fan, buy this game for $10. Even if you are the most hardcore of G.I. Joe fans out there in the entire world, don't spend full price for this. Wait for a deep sale. Wait for $15, $10, I think, is a decent price for this game. Uh, not even 20, I would say below 20. Yeah, definitely 15 or, or 10. Uh, and yeah, the reason why I spent full price for this game is because I wanted to play it on release day, no matter what. And the only way I'll, I, you know, the only way I could do that was by spending full price on it, of course. But I will say, if you are on the fence about it, wait for this, for a deep sale. Just wait. If you have children, if you have a son or a daughter who are hardcore G.I. Joe fans and they want to play this game and they don't care about the graphic performance of a game or how well a game performs and they just want to play with their favorite G.I. Joe character then sure spend the full price buy it for your for your children it this might make their day but if you're if you are a adult who loves G.I. Joe and you do care about performance in video games don't spend full price on this I'm warning you right now <laughs> Um, but what else can I say about the game? Oh, geez. Just frustration. That's the only word I could come up with. But moving away from that, getting to each of the characters, and I don't know, felt kind of empty when I was playing as them. Like, most of them had similar abilities. For example, R Roadblock and Destro were very similar. They both had similar weapons, except different colors that's the only difference between the weapons their special dodge ability which is them just charging forward were pretty much the same uh how what else was identical well their taunts were different you can taunt in this game which does nothing the taunt is just there just for fun it would be nice if the taunt actually i don't know build up your special abilities which is another thing the special abilities in this game they don't do jack squat <laughs> There were times where I used my special abilities and it felt like they had no impact on the enemies at all and enemies were just still shooting at me and I'm just like, oh, okay. Oh, the enemies, the AI, yeah. Uh, I don't like how they move around sporadically since the aiming system in this game is pretty much a joke. And I don't like the fact that the game just spawns in a, an insane amount of enemies all around you just randomly at any given moment. So you're just being shot from behind, left, right, 
everywhere and you're just like, what the hell, who's shooting at me? I have to constantly run and find cover or find med packs. And it, that just quickly became frustrating, especially during boss battles. Like the one Cobra Commander boss battle near the end of the game, um, where I think I was Snake Eyes. I can't remember which character I was playing as, but he kept spawning in multiple enemies all around me. And I was just like, man, what the hell? I just want to defeat this boss already because I had to constantly run away from damage because it seemed like they can target you with pinpoint accuracy. But when it comes to you targeting them with pinpoint accuracy, good luck with that. Uh, there are unlockable costumes which requires you to go through and search each of the levels for hidden collectibles. And you get to unlock certain skins for your character, certain skins for your, their weapons. Um, there's other unlockables like comic book covers or certain artwork from, you know, uh, uh, G.I. Joe artists. Uh, there's modulars in the game, which are pretty much cheats. So you can have like infinite ammo or make it so your character could have more health and more shield. Or you can flip that and make the characters do more damage to you. But they're pretty much just cheats that you can use in the game. And the only time you can use those is when you replay a level. So let's say if you're playing a level for the first time, you cannot use those mods. But if you replay that level, you can use those mods and make the game easier for yourself, which I suggest using when replaying levels just to make the game less frustrating. Also, I recommend playing the game on easy, on the easiest setting that you can possibly go because trust me, trust me, you do not want to play this game <laughs> on the hardest setting, as frustrating as it is already. Uh, there is multiplayer, but it's local multiplayer. There is no like uh, online co-op or you can't use the multi other multiplayer options like capture the flag or team deathmatch in online no no it's only local you have to have somebody else with you an extra controller or a few extra controllers to play the multiplayer modes and for forty dollars yikes that's a big yikes um maybe that's something they will patch in later on hopefully they will do that so people can play with other people online but as of now yeah, if you want to play the multiplayer part, it just simply does not work. Even if you go to it, press the X button to continue, it won't work. You have to have an extra controller and someone else with you. So, if you're looking to platinum this game, uh, you better have extra controllers because <laughs> some of the trophies are for multiplayer and since this is not online, you're just going to have to do it locally on your own system. So, I think... I covered everything. I covered the gameplay mechanics, um, the characters, the unlockables, the multiplayer portion of this game, which is as of now non-existent unless you have, I don't know, family that lives with you or friends that come over every now and then to like to play video games with you. Um, but as a proper G.I. Joe video game, this is not it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not it. Wait for a deep sale. Wait for this to drop to $10 or just not bother to buy this at all. Continue to wait until like a, a good video game company makes, you know, a proper triple A GI Joe video game, which has yet to be seen. And I hope it does happen someday. But this, this, uh, you know, I had hopes for this game. Um, is the nostalgia there? Eh, I don't really know. I don't really know. I think the nostalgia is only there when it comes to the cutscenes. <laughs> if you even want to call it cutscenes, they're more like storyboard panels that they put in story mode where you're actually like, or it feels like you're looking at like comic book panels or pages of a comic book. They're not actually like fully rendered cutscenes where you actually get to see characters moving around. But, yeah, I think that's the only part that feels nostalgic about it, just hearing the voice dialogue from the story mode and watching the story play out in those cutscenes. All right, so I apologize if this video went on for way too long. Um, I'll see what I can cut out of this video. 
um, to make it not so long, but it's still going to be long. And um, yeah, I'll just title this my honest opinion about G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. And once again, don't spend full price for this. Even if you love G.I. Joe, wait for this to reach under $20. If you have children who love G.I. Joe, they just don't care about the video game performance, buy it for them. They might enjoy it. But uh, yeah, if you know what you're getting yourself into, just avoid this game like the plague or... Yeah, wait for a sale. That's all I have to say about it. And hopefully one day we'll get a good AAA G.I. Joe game, which I'm still dreaming about that. I mean, man, if we can get one on PlayStation 5, that would be pretty epic. Uh, well, I'll just keep dreaming. Anyways, this is Omega Primus, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later.